The committee will come to order. The chairman notes the presence of a quorum, which under committee rule 3E is two members. The Subcommittee on Energy and Mineral Resources is meeting today to hear testimony on an oversight hearing entitled Energy in America, BLM's Red Tape Runaround and its Impact on American Energy Production. Under Committee Rule 4F, opening statements are limited to the chairman and ranking member of the subcommittee. However, I ask unanimous consent to include any other members' opening statements in the hearing record if submitted to the clerk by closing today. Hearing no objection, so ordered. I now recognize myself for five minutes. I'd like to thank our witnesses for being here today. Today we are meeting to discuss the impact that the Bureau of Land Management's red tape and expanding regulatory footprint has on energy development. Since taking office, the Obama administration has made oil and gas development so burdensome and uncertain that companies continue to avoid federal land for energy development. The companies that do develop on federal land are subject to multiple regulatory hurdles, permit approval delays, and increasingly duplicative and burdensome regulations. Additionally, the BLM is gradually expanding its regulatory footprint by regulating aspects of oil and gas production that fall under the jurisdiction of the states or other federal agencies. The BLM does not have the authority, resources, or expertise to manage these aspects of production. For example, the BLM is proposing resource management plans that would implement aggressive air quality objectives and restrictions. However, the EPA and the relevant states, under the authority given to them by the Clean Air Act, are simultaneously developing and enforcing air quality control measures. Yet the BLM continues to pursue a separate yet duplicative path in monitoring emissions that are not within their jurisdiction, nor do they have the resources or expertise to enforce these regulations. Additionally, the BLM is attempting to regulate water use through hydraulic fracturing regulations and resource management plans. However, it is widely accepted that groundwater is under the jurisdiction and is the property of the states. The BLM's attempt to assert regulatory authority through the regulation of groundwater is a direct invasion upon the state's rights to protect and regulate their own water resources. The administration has repeatedly canceled lease sales, added additional lease terms after a lease has been issued, and taking months, if not years, to issue APDs. Most recently, five days before a lease sale, the BLM unexpectedly deferred 57 leases encompassing nearly 100,000 acres after capitulating to the concerns of one group that filed their concerns two months after the protest period had ended. In my home state of Colorado, resource management plans threatened to restrict oil and gas operations with a variety of mechanisms. No surface occupancy stipulations, right of way avoidance, exclusion areas, wildlife emphasis areas, and lands within wilderness characteristics, which all create layers upon layers of hurdles and red tape that serves to limit or even eliminate oil and gas development on federal land. For several years, our committee has highlighted the fact that while the administration has attempted to claim credit for the increase in American energy production, the numbers tell a different story. It is no secret that American energy production is increasing on state and private land. Production continues to decrease on federal land as the administration's regulations continue to increase. And with the BLM continuing to slow walk APD approvals, and lease fewer and fewer acres for development, this trend does not appear to be reversing itself any time in the near future. The BLM will soon release the final production numbers for 2013, and while we unfortunately have not yet seen these numbers as they, as they are not yet released in time for this hearing, I have no doubt that we will once again see proof that the administration's assault on energy production continues. I'd like to once again thank all of our witnesses for appearing before our committee, and I look forward to your testimony. At this point, I'd like to recognize the ranking member for his opening statement.